Hi, welcome to another video. I hope you're all doing well. Do I go through there? Can you see it behind me? I think I will. And the reason is, I'm having a little walk again. We're now in October and autumn is well on the way. When did I release that other video? It was about three weeks ago. Um, autumn officially starts here, something like that. <laughs> so this is, this is the reason I'm doing this. Um, I've got a viewing on the house and the estate agent has said, do you think you could not be here while we show the prospective buyers around? <laughs> so I'm thinking, what can I do? Shall I just go for a walk? And I will. I've got to get out of the house for half an hour. Might be just a case of trekking through the woods. See if I can get any more autumn shots. So we're three weeks into autumn and um, will there be any change? Will there be any brown? I mean, it certainly still looks green here, but I thought I'll come through the woods, see if I can see anything. Might see some mushrooms. <laughs> There are people that photograph mushrooms, aren't there? It seems to be their passion. Um, and I think they're, they're particularly nice if you get some close-ups. So if I see any mushrooms, I'll take some pictures of mushrooms. I've always thought that this woods was unkempt and I have a public right-of-way I can walk through here. <laughs> it looks like spring. You can see some of the brown in the trees. But what will make the nice shot? Who can say? And so that was a long walk coming through there. Probably a quarter of a mile of just nothing. <laughs> Didn't see a single thing because it's just all upright trees and mostly still green. And then I get here where the path divides. I've got a route coming down. If you've seen any of my videos about the two trees, that's where that goes up. This continues to the end, and then that goes down. You can see we've got some tree foliage, which means cluttering about. So I'm going to go up here. It will get us out into the fields. There's nothing in the woods to take a photograph of, but I tried. <laughs> so if you're still with me, bear with me, because I'm sure I'll see something in a minute, because this path just comes out into the field here. I like that the roots are now making little steps. Gosh, so much foliage. So the path normally goes up there, but you can see it's just not been used. So as with the human race, we make detours. Come out into the farmer's field, which does have the public footpath going right through the middle. So I don't know. And it's a bleak, cloudy day. Not even taking a photograph yet. What's going on? <laughs> but that's the thing with photography. You know, you can, I think, you know, when I do my shoot, what you see, I'm in a town scene or wherever I might be, it's very easy just to snap, 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 snap. But I thought I'd come out and capture you know, a bit more of autumn, but it's just not happening yet. Now where's this footpath? So we've got the public, public footpath there, which goes right across the field between the two trees. So I'll take a shot of that. I put my 18 to 140 back on the Tamron, uh, the Nikon lens, because it's Nikon or a, a Nikkor lens. It pairs well with the Nikon camera, right? It's not a Nikon, it's a Nikon. Take the N away, what have you got? Icon, N Icon. Unless you're speaking Japanese, then it's a Nikon. <laughs> Just so you know, I'm calling it a, Ni a Nikon. If it had two Ks in the middle, it would be a Nikon. Just saying. So I'm getting the two trees in the picture, as you can see, we've got the 
sky. It's a question of whether I come in and just put them on the left and the right third. Maybe come out a little bit. That's 18, which isn't good. I think something like that. There's no hints of, of autumn on them yet. What I'll do is cut through here after this picture and then just walk down the the um, the Wooten village centre to see if I can see some stuff that's a hint of autumn. So I'm going into aperture priority, set it to f11. I've got ISO 100. There's a bit of a hint of sun, despite the despite the hazy day. Fiftieth of a second. Let's up the compensation. That's better. It's funny how the camera wants to um, give you what it thinks is the best lighting and settings and you take the shot and then you have to adjust the exposure compensation up two steps just to bring out the lightness in the foreground of the subject. Have a look at this, I'm going to go up there. Coming out onto the onto the lane, that's what I'm talking about. Can you see the birch tree? All the leaves have changed. And this one here, which is a chestnut tree, which I'm pretty sure it is looking by the leaves. Can't see any conkers on it now. I might get a shot going up into the leaves because that looks quite nice. And they're all browning here. They look like they're burnt. So I've got two potential shots here. One going up into the leaves. I like the colours. We'll go portrait on this. I'm just leaving the camera set at um, F, is that F10. I think that worked. And that way, because I'm in aperture priority, it will choose the speed, and as long as I've got the right speed for my ISO, then that will be fine. What do you think? A shot up the lane with the, with the birch tree. I'm going to go for 30th of a second at F10. I'm, I'm kind of angling up. 18 mil gives me what I hope will be. A shot worthy of the country lane. So what I was saying about why I've got the Nikon, uh, the Nikon lens back on, I'd bought the Tamron 18 to 200. Now I had one of these, the earlier model, when I first bought this camera. And it was a decent lens. And then I gave the other DSLR to Georgia for her GCSEs, which she's now using for um, her A-levels. And because I only had the one kit lens, which came with this, actually gave her the original Tamron 18 to 200 and she's still using it to this day she's capturing great pictures so I thought you know I could expand I'll get that I've got the later model I am having such real problems trying to make it focus and if you've seen a couple of my videos recently you will have seen that I've taken shots and I have presented them on screen but they're particularly not sharp Yes, I know it could be my settings and it's very easy just to go in priority mode or auto mode and just let the camera do everything. But part of the experience is continually learning 
if I'm out doing landscapes, let's fix on aperture priority. Let's make sure that we've got the best depth of field. Everything else falls into place after that. If I'm doing motorsport or street photography, I personally want to think about sh shutter priority to capture the motion and any blur if I want to include that and let the camera do all its aperture. So you're always thinking these things when you're going out with a camera that's got all the settings. <laughs> so because I didn't have a good experience with that 18 to 200 and it might be that I've got to just continually play around with it is the reason I'm back out with the 18 to 140. It's been a good companion to this entry level DSLR, the Nikon D3200, which I think I've used for about four years now. Started this channel in 2020. It was the lockdown challenge. What are you going to do with yourself when you're locked indoors and you can't, you know, you're part of a little cell and you can go and see them once a week. <laughs> I like this scene. I like the bushes on the left and the right and the junction. So there's a nice human element with the painted lines, but we've got the turning of the leaves. Now I can't decide, should I go portrait or should I go landscape? So it might be a case of doing both. Zoom in. And then I'll do one. I'm getting hints of the um, autumn. to capture a little bit of what is around me for the autumn and I'm quite excited because I've been taking pictures of the horse chestnut tree Ken had suggested that I do and I've said it again and again but each week I've gone down to the chestnut tree and taken lots of pictures so on the first day of winter I'm going to be presenting you <laughs> it's winter this is what I did in autumn <laughs> so many of you know that I've um done a lot of photography here in Wootton but that will soon be coming to an end as I will no longer be a resident of Wootton and I can't see myself coming up here just to take photos it's great it's been great living here because if you if you're into country walks I'm in the countryside and I just get out the front door and there you go you're in the middle of nowhere but that wouldn't mean but wherever I relocate to, I'd want to come up here just to take a walk because there are so many wonderful places to, to go to take a walk and take your camera. Sweden and Norway are looming. I feel the need to also go up to Scotland. Midgy season's finished. Right, I think I might get one more shot here. I liked the avenue of you know, sort of the, the trees coming over the bushes. But there's a heavy, unsuitable for HGV sign, ruining the aesthetic of a country lane. I suppose one could look behind one, couldn't one? <laughs> oh, that's sweet, isn't it? How far back can I come to make it look pleasant? Come back out into the light so that the darkness is only the middle bit. That's quite nice, isn't it? Pop that down there. This might be my last shot. 18 mil. I want to focus in.
I might have done some blending there simply because I did the photograph down on Folkestone Beach, which you might have seen from last Saturday's video, and a comment was left. Why didn't you do a fast shutter speed on the waves and then do your normal slow shutter speed to capture the lighthouse and then blend the two? I actually don't think in terms of that when I'm out doing my photography. Maybe I ought to. Maybe a video would be that I'm out and you're only going to see one photograph because I'm going to take all the time I need to prepare for that one image. <laughs> anyway, I'm back at the house now and it looks like the cars have gone for the viewing. So back to work. In the meantime, I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.